So in the last screencast, I talked about what health inequalities are, and we looked at some of the most recent data on the Office of National Statistics, looking at how the differences, the two, two stark things I talked about. One was about the fact that um, for men, there's nearly a 10 year difference in life expectancy between those in England who live in the most deprived areas compared to those that live in the least deprived areas. And the second thing I mentioned was about how it's not just, if that's not bad enough, it's not just the fact that those in the most deprived areas are going to die earlier, it's that they're going to spend more time in poorer health. So what I want to do now is step back in time. And I'm taking us back to the to the time of the rah-rah skirts and um, and Queen and Frankie says relax. I'm going back to 1980 and to what's called the Black Report. Oh, it was actually called the Working Group on Inequalities in Health, but it, it's known as the Black Report. And this report back in 1980, it demonstrated how um, the, exactly the things that are happening now, that, that there is a relationship between um, deprivation and um, and a dying younger, essentially. And despite the fact that um, people thought that when the NHS was created in 1948, that this would, you know, this would be the panacea, this would be the answer to all our health problems, what they found was that actually the inequalities in health have been widening since then. But what they did say was that this wasn't a failure of the NHS, but because of the social inequality. And they're talking about the great disparity in income, education, housing, diet, employment conditions of work. Now, what was interesting, I suppose, is the timing of this report. This was 1980. Well, in 1979, it was the election of Margaret Thatcher. Now, when we're talking about health inequalities and health determinants, inevitably there is a <clears throat> there is a political dimension to this. <clears throat> you know, it is a political view, and it is one, quite frankly, that was not palatable um, to Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher very much was a believer that individuals um, had control of their destiny and people 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 could overcome, and was not. Um, was not a fan, shall we say, of thinking, uh, of accepting about health inequalities and to, and the fact, and looking at socio-economic conditions. If we move on um, from the Black Report to the Aitchison Report, <clears throat> and this was uh, Sir Donald Aitchison was the chair of this, and it was an independent inquiry into inequalities in health. And I've put the link on so you can open the link and have a look yourself. And this was um, published in 1998. Very similar um, to the Black Report in saying that actually health inequalities are not to do with individuals. It's not, it's not the feckless poor um, that, you know, Margaret Thatcher might have liked us to believe, but rather um, it was to do with inequalities in income, in housing, in education. And what Aitchison said was that there was three areas which they felt were crucial. Firstly, that all policies that were likely to have some sort of impact on health needed to be evaluated um, by the government to have a look at what was their impact on health inequalities. So before any um, policy was actually put into practice, to have a look at, well, what difference would this make to health inequalities? Secondly, um, Aitchison felt that um, a high priority should be given to the health of families with children. They thought that children was an absolute priority. And thirdly, the actual step should be taken to try and reduce the differences, um, reduce income inequalities, and try and improve the living standards of those people in poorer families. So if we move to 2010, to a name um, that's probably much more familiar to you than, than Black or, or Ageson, and that is Michael Marmot, or um, Professor Sir Michael Marmot. And 
he did um, a very readable. I would urge you to have a look at this. It's not a particularly, um, it's very readable, very approachable. And it's, it's called Fair Society, Healthy Lives, but it tends to be known as a Marmot Review. Now, there are two. He did a later one in 2020, but I'm talking about the 2010 one first. And as well as coming to the same conclusions as Aitchison and Black in terms of health inequalities and the reasons for that, um, he also talked about um, health inequalities in to do with mental health as well and well-being. And uh, highlighting how it's not just these differences in physical health, it's not, diff not just differences in life expectancy, but it's differences in mental health as well. And indeed, as you can see from here, children and adults living in households in the lowest 20% income bracket in the UK are two to three times more likely to develop mental health problems than those in the highest. That's, that's you know, these, these are fairly significant um, figures, aren't they? He very comprehensively said that health inequalities result from social inequalities. He is extremely critical of um, any talk of um, laying the blame for these differences in health, uh, in health inequality, these differences in health between the, the most affluent and least affluent at individual door. Um, he, his attitude to if people start talking about individual lifestyle choices, he says you're essentially, um, you know, it's it's blaming, it's blaming for people, um, for things that they are not in control of. For him, he's extremely clear that health inequalities result from social inequalities. So rather than any notions of the feckless poor or people making very poor decisions when they needlessly, he says it, it absolutely is to do with social inequalities. And that if we're going to try and improve health inequalities, then action needs to be taken by the government, by policymakers, um, to in introduce policy and practice that uh, that will look at um, improvements and action on all of the social determinants of health. And he absolutely thinks that we should focus on trying to reduce the, um, the, the difference between the most and the least affluent, narrowing that gap. Another area Marmot talks about is how how disadvantage starts before birth and it accumulates throughout life. So he's very interested on in how we should um, try and reduce health inequalities prior to birth. So thinking about conception and it must absolutely need to intervene um, and provide support and try and try and improve the health and well-being of, of pregnant women, um, of, of children at birth, that we absolutely need to do that. And he sees this very much as an opportunity to intervene and to make a significant difference. Again, if we make the connection between, between that and the life course approach, so thinking about what happens and experiences in the first um, early years of life has a disproportionate impact. If you were going to pick any two years of life and say which are the most important two years, it would be the first two years. Um, and he, he, for him, the highest priority was him, for him, was giving every child the best start in life. So in his 2010 report, he essentially concluded with six policy objectives. Number one is the one I've already said, give every child the best start in life. And he's been consistent with that. Secondly, he's talking about having, um, trying to maximize the capabilities of children and young people and adults and try and um, maximize how much control they have over their lives. Thirdly, creating fair employment and good work for all. So it's not just 
not being unemployed. It's about being in a job which is um, good for your mental and physical health. And he thought all of these required joined up work across all sectors, as well as local implementation and participation. So it's not just something that one area of government can do, but rather all areas of government need to work together. Looking at income levels, um, as you can see, some of these are, are controversial. That there was a minimum healthy standard of living for all, so that people could access food. Create and develop healthy and sustainable places and communities and strengthen the role and impact of ill health prevention. So they were his um, 2010 um, conclusions. He then, 10 years on, um, so 2010, he did another study, which is Health Equity in England, the Marmot Review, 10 years on. And unfortunately, what he didn't find was an improved situation. Um, essentially, what he's saying is that we've been having, you know, for the last decade, continuous um, great improvements in life expectancy. But from 20 to 2011, these, these slowed dramatically. And actually, um, shockingly that if you actually looked at some of the most deprived communities the actual life expectancy fell and when we look at other countries this hasn't been the case so in the in in the UK it has in England sorry his studies just England in England it has been the case that life expectancy as, as fell in the most deprived areas, and it, it you know our life expectancy is no longer um, getting longer. But when we look across at other countries, they still are. So that tells us that there is still um, scope for humans to live longer. But there is something that's different about um, England at the moment compared to other countries, which means that we are we are taking a di different trajectory. The other thing he highlighted, which was something I spoke earlier about, which is it's not just life expectancy, it's time spent in poor health. And what he, he the, the statistics told us is that not just in areas of deprivation, but for, for men and women everywhere, the time spent in poor health is, is, in, is increasing. So have a look um, at this video, um, sorry, the video, have a look at the um, at this link and have a look at the Marmot Review. It's very, very readable and interesting reading. Thank you.